Hello everyone, hope you all are doing well. I'm going to start a new web series on deep learning with satellite imagery. This web series is divided into three different parts and in this whole series, I'm going to explain step by step coding line by line how you are going to start from data processing, build your deep learning model, debug your deep learning model locally, remotely, and finally generate your deep learning model, which you could use to perform the scoring or the prediction on the test data set, as well as a date, a particular image, which we will grab from uh, Google Maps. While we are going to train our model, we will learn how to extract the details or the output related to the activation as well as the gradients through our deep learning training process. The model which will be generated as the output of this whole exercise will be deployed at hugging phase where just passing an image, you can generate the output based on the classes which we are going to train in our model. Overall, this hands-on exercise or the hands-on workshop is going to be very useful for anyone who is starting their journey with the deep learning as well as the anyone who is expert but there will be a lot to learn for everyone so let's take a look what we are going to cover even in details in each three parts of this web series the video starts with the introduction to the satellite data how it is collected how it is generated and how we really start processing when we perform the training Next, we learn the generation of the masked segmented image for each satellite image tile. The labels generated for the masked image are also being explained. And finally, in a Google Colab environment, by using the Python code and various Python libraries such as NumPy, Matplotlib, Pillow, Keras, TensorFlow, Patchify, OpenCV, and few others, we are going to learn how to prepare our data by combining the training images with segmentation images and the labels to generate our data, which is ready in the form of training and test package for the deep learning process. So the output of first part is going to be the training data, which we will apply into the part two of our video. The part two of our video is all about performing the deep learning with the satellite data. First, we need to learn the unit model, which we are going to be based for our deep learning process. So we need to know the encoder and the decoder, which are the integral part of our model architecture. Next, we also need to learn more about the loss functions which we are going to use in our training process and the metrics which will help us to learn the deep learning process outcome by using the jupyter notebook in a google collab environment we will code our whole deep learning process and perform the deep learning training and the output of this process will be our model we will learn the model history and apply the model for serving or to generate predictions. After the first iteration of our deep learning, we will apply another Python library so that we could get the activation outputs as well as the gradients for the each layer in our deep learning network. The third part will be the extension of our second part where we are going to apply the various advanced concepts in our deep learning process. First, we will learn how to perform the diagnostics for the deep learning process at the local level. And then we are going to apply the remote debugging or remote diagnostics by using the weights and bias. In the third step, we are going to deploy our deep learning model at hugging face space. And our interface to the model serving will be the Gradio base UI. We are going to create the Gradio base UI, which will take a particular image taken from Google Maps and our model will perform the prediction to generate various landmarks in our given image based on its training 
class. So now without any further delay, we can start the first part of our video where we are going to learn the data processing for the satellite imagery. The foundation for the satellite images are the satellite maps, which you can get from any mapping service, including the Google Maps. So looking at to the Google Map and you can really set up the particular layer which layer you are interested into but if you look into the satellite view of the layers that's where you will be able to see the map and using this map we generate the satellite imagery data for deep learning this data is the map data is translated into the three different segments these segments are the tile image so the Tile image is a one particular tile coming out from your satellite mapping data. For the label data, we have to create the image mask, which is the masked image of the given image tile. And the mask labels are the list of items which you would want to train your deep learning model so that you could predict in your input data when you are applying your model figure it out which particular class of items you, your model can predict into given image. So in the left side is your source style and in the right side you have the image mask and the mask is showing the particular labels which this given tile has been classified to. Here you could see there are buildings, there are miscellaneous objects, uh, roads, tracks, trees, crop, standing water, large vehicle small vehicle so the limit could be anything whatever you would want to train for the only thing is that you have to provide the training data which is sufficient enough so that your model can learn from the input data the data set which we are going to use in our project is coming out from this dubai data set which was released from this project humans in the loop the original project is described here you can learn more about it you can get the data set from here or you can visit to this Kaggle data set page where you can also get this data set as well as the description about this data set and looking into this data set you can get the idea about the labels there are six label five landmarks and anything else which is not landmarked classified as a unlabeled so we are going to use this data set with this class description to process further. Next, if you would want to use the same code and you would want to apply on a larger data set with a few tweaks here and there, I have another introduction to very large data set, which is even much bigger in size as well as the much bigger in the labels. So this is spacenet.ai SNX6 challenge website where you could get the data and as you could see that the initial data set is actually designed or the taken from about 120 square kilometer which has about 48,000 building footprints from the Rotterdam the Netherlands. So looking into this data you could see this is about 39 gig but if you would have the patience to really go ahead and try the learning which you are going to get from this tutorial you can definitely apply it. Now let's spend a little more time and learn more about how the data set is going to be processed by us in our deep learning model. So we have already learned the satellite data is taken and split into the tile. So each set input data set will be a collection of hundreds of or thousands of these tiles. For the respective tile, there will be the tile mask. So depending on your tile sizes, there must be a mask for it. And the, the landmarks are also specifically laid out in the mask based on their specific color. So depending on how complex your input data set is, the list of labels is also going to be to complement the mask. That is very important aspect of mask for the given tile. As you could see here in this JSON, for this given image, here are the list of classes this particular mask has. And for each particular class, you can understand 
the type which is a polygon and for each type label what is the adjacent color further the tile sometimes could be really very large so the each tile is further divided into two by two three by three or even four by four images sometimes because the tile may not be perfect square if it is a rectangular then it is very much possible that the tile image could be in the size of one two three four by five it could be any size my point is to share here is that you cannot just assume that the data should be two by two three by three or four by four so you because of this understanding you have to make sure that before you process your data you make sure that the data is adjusted properly for the individual tile as it's divided into further images the masks are also adjusted accordingly so that is very important to understand that when we are processing the satellite data you are going to get the tile data which is a collection of so many images and the tile mask data is also the collection of images but that does not change the constitution of your label data because labels are still the same even when we are splitting the mask image into multiple sub images next we need to process this data and when we try to process the input tile data as well as the mask data we have to make sure that we define that what is our patch size so patch size could be 256 by 256 or the 512 by 512 depending on your patch size you can also understand when you are training how you can adjust your batch size if your smaller patches you can create a larger batch if your patch size is larger then you can create a smaller batch depending on how your resources are there in order to process your input data then what happens is that very first thing whenever we get these images we actually take these images and we make sure that these images are the multiple of our patch size so first we adjust all of these images reshape them so they are based on our patch size and then after we take these images and then we split them even more so that we could create the patch of every image and every mask image with the size of our patch image and that is what becomes our numpy array data which going to be fed into our machine learning training system this step is very important and we are going to follow in our work shop really very seriously and i will guide you step by step in the next step we need to understand the label processing how we perform the one hot encoding to the labels so just an example for the given data this is the label class file so every label is defined in a hex color however if you look into the images when we process them through any image library we get the rgb color so for example when we process them we always get the height times width times the color coding whether it's a rgb or it's a grayscale if it's a grayscale then it becomes one and or if it's a ygbr then it's became a very different so depending on encoding we have to make sure that labels are properly adjusted so for a given hex code we split them into the proper rgb and then based on rgb we match the proper label so we need to also process the label labels from hex all the way to rgb so that is another part we perform in our satellite imagery data processing so that the labels are recognized correctly based on given data set and their corresponding mask so i think this introduction should be enough for us to go ahead and we can start coding our data processing step of this workshop i have created this collab notebook at google collab you can also use the free version of google collab for this whole workshop and the data set which we have talked about here i have already downloaded this data set directly from the kaggle and i have uploaded this data set to my google drive which we are going to connect with this google collab notebook and access directly one other option is that if you do not want to connect google drive then you can upload the data set whenever your google collab environment is ready so first i'm going to connect the google drive now the google drive is connected with this environment so i will go ahead and i will show you that ls dos lah that this is the place where the satellite data is 
and the data set is available in this Dubai data set. So if we would want to look into the content inside this Dubai data set, we could actually access it here. And that's where you could see that all the folders are tile one to tile eight, and there are the classes respective to this data. So this data set, which we have just seen is from tile one to tile eight and each tile is a collection of images and each image, what we are seeing here is the respective mask here. So here is the mask for the first image. The source data set for our workshop is quite easy for us to understand once we understood the foundation of data satellite data set. We are going to create the foundation of our data set. So we will call it data set root folder is this and we will select the data set name because a uh, reason I have created this way because you can use you can use multiple data sets when you are using the same Jupyter notebook. So data set name will become this Dubai data set. So these are the two entities which we are going to use for our source data set. So now our next step is going to process the images or at least learn the images which are available in these folders so we need to import the os so i will be using this cell so import os and in the os there is a method called os.walk so os.walk method helps us to select a particular folder so our data set root folder and what it does, it actually returns us the path subdirectories and the files. So for path and files in os.walk. So we can take that path, we can split it os.path.separator because separator depend on wherever you are using this code, Linux or Windows machine, separator could be different. So we are going to take the separator and then we are going to use the negative one index so that is going to give us the directory name. So if you say I would want to know what is the directory name at this point, let's print it and let's run this code. So you see here that within the Dubai data set, we are getting the tiles. Within the tiles, we are getting the images and masks. Within the tile, we are also getting the images and masks. So for every folder which we are reading, there are the further images and masks. So very quickly, we could figure it out how we can get all the directories which are available in this data set. However, we just need to make sure that when we are using our source data set is going to be the Dubai data set. So here we could actually use os.path.join and we can actually take this data set name to, there you go. So now we will not see the other data set, satellite data set, which, which that is another. Now, if we look into our data set, we are only going to get the folders which are available into the Dubai data set. Now we need to figure it out whether we want to process the images or we want to process the mask. So here you could say if the directory name is images, then you could process all the images. If you would want to process mask, then you can process the mask. So here, now you can say all images. So images will become your os.list directory and you can pass the directory name, which is the path here. And at this point, images is a list. Uh, let me just give you, it may not be the good thing, but at least you can get an idea that images is an array. So for the way data set in the tile folder directory, we found the images folder in the, within the images folder. Here are all the images we are not processing the masks then in the images folder here are all the images for the tile one folder for the images folders we here are the images so if we do not print this part that should give you very quick idea that all the images in individual directory we have found now we could enumerate them so we could say for i image name in and now here you can enumerate these images. So you could say, I would like to take these images, but I would like to enumerate them. And here, if you say, I would like to print the image name, let's see. Now you, you can get an idea that we are getting all the images individual. We do not need to see this message. And now you are getting the list of all images. 
Similar to that, if you would want to make sure that the images must be the JPEG images, then you can process them also. You could say if this image name ends with, and then you can provide your extension. So you could say JPEG only then print the image. And that's where your images are there. However, if you will choose the directory as a masks, you will not get any images because your check is .jpeg. So all the masks images are the PNG. So if you change that to PNG, you will get all the mask images. So you can get a very good idea that your source data, which is actually here, so the these images are, as you could see on the hover, is they are the JPEG image. The mask images are the PNG image. So this is how you will be able to access all of your images, whether you would want to process mask or you would want to process the JPEG. So I will comment this area. I will say you can also use the images here and here you can also use the dot APG. So that way we do not see the output. I just want to make sure that it's easier for us to work with notebook. Now in the next step, I will show you how we are going to read these images. For reading these images, we are going to use the open CV. So I will import here. So I will say import CV2. And because we are using the Google Colab environment, so CV2 is already installed here. So we are importing the CV2. Now we are going to read the images from the given folder. So if you look into the directory name and remember this, this was the directory name. However, the path which we have is split completely. So depending on whatever this folder is, the directory names are basically the tile for images mask. So we need to have that included in our path. So for example, this path, if you will try to print the path here, you will get, so let me comment this. And here you are getting the proper path for the each folder, which has the either mask or the images. So we are going to use this notation in order to process our data. Okay, so let's use this open CV to read the image. So CV2 dot IM read. So IM read is our method which is going to read and then here we are going to provide the path. So path will be the first, I will show you how you could create. So your path is basically the root folder then your data set name, that's where your data set name. Now you are going to say that where you are going to read the tile. So we could say, oh, let's start with the tile one. Then we need to provide the images or mask, whatever is our turn. So that's where the images is going to come. And at this point, we could actually say that what image we want. So we have already seen that our images are the image part then 001 image part 001 dot jpeg that's our image comma one so that's the image read and then we are going to read this image as a image equals so now we have read this very first image and this image is what we have and if we just try to see what the image is so image is a n-dimensional array we can check the shape shape will tell you that the image height, width, and the color type, whether it's a grayscale or it's the RGB. So this information is very important for us to go ahead and process the our images. So as you could see that if we change this image to, for example, image uh, tile one, and if we use the tile two image one, image shape change. So you can get an idea that all these images are the different shapes in different folder. So we need to make sure that all of these images has to be uniformed. Okay, so let's go ahead and start working our code where we could process all of these images. So first we need the image data set. So that's our image data set array. As our data set is divided into the tiles folder so we need to make sure that tile because remember tile has the id and image has the id so we could say for tile id in range of tiles so we have seen that our tiles are from 1 to 8 so we could say from range 1 to 8 and then for image id in range 1 to 20 
because we have seen that how many images are so that way we could figure it out we could process all almost all the images and their individual folder so you can even say 202 because we will validate if image is there or not now we are going to use this method which really process our images so here we will change the tile number to the tile id and we will also change the image id with this number and here we are reading the jpeg so we could also actually set because same method is going to use the mask as well as the images so we can make sure that this is also changed so here we could actually use image extension is actually dot jpeg and replace this here and remove the dot from here because that's where the dot is already there so this is how we are going to read the images so everything what we have read is became the image here and then we could actually print the image dot shape so all the jpeg images which we are reading we are going to get the image shape however we need to make sure that this image is not none because it is very much possible that range go high and then file will not be able to read so we could say if image is not none let's print it you run this code you are going to get all these images which we are reading from different places and you can get an idea that for each tile the images all the images in that particular tile are same however the individual tile the images are different so now we have seen the images if we would want to make sure that this images is also whether it's a mask or images so we could also say image type is equal to masks and later it can also be used as images so now we could use image type here because the image part between the images and between the mask is does not really change so this part will still going to be the same and here it can also be the png so if we would want to check the mask we will also going to see that everything is going to be the same now it's time for us to understand the patching of our image so remember we talk about that we need to decide the patch and then we need to make sure that we could all the images are the multiple of the patch size so that is what we are going to apply in our source data so one thing i just wanted to show you that right now you see that the image which we are reading here is 544 by 549 so we need to make sure that this image shape is going to be the multiple of our patch image so let's define our patch size so our image patch size is 256 that is our patch size now we can take this image which is our 544 by 544 which is very different the multiple of 256 so in order to perform the patching we can generate this quick method so here we take this image shape which has image shape of 0 you can get the 544 value you can actually mod it with our patch size so our patch size is 256 it will tell you that the in the multiples it's only 2 times 256 times 256 which is 512 and third will not be applicable same thing happens with 1 you will get one because it's under 512 so we can get an idea that how we can make sure the patch size work then we can take this whole result and we can multiply this whole thing with the patch size so we will get that in this case the multiple will be 256 in in this case of 0 the multiple will be 512 so all the images will have the multiple of image patch size what we are looking for so the x will be this value and y will be this value so we could actually define that here we could say the size of x is we take this whole value and we need to make sure this is one and the size of y is the zero value and patch size so this is how we are going to get the x and y for each of these images now we can just to make sure everything is understood we can take print and here you could say format size x size 
Y. And at the same time, if you would want to print the image shape, you could actually print the image shape also. So you have better idea that how the adjustment is going to happen. Let's run this code. So we are reading the mask. So we need to make sure that our value is PNG. So let's make sure this is the images and JPEG. You could see that how these values are being adjusted in the multiples of 256 by 256. Let's comment this line, go next. Now we are going to convert this image which we have actually if you would want to really understand what is this image when we are reading you can actually come here and you can say give me the type of this image so you can say print the type of image you can get an idea let me read it so this is the numpy nd array whenever this im read is reading this image this is the numpy nd array as you could see that this image is actually the numpy image so we need to convert this image to the image type so we can use the image library which is from the pillow so let's use the pillow library here so from pil import image and when we are importing image we can also say import numpy as np because sooner or later we need to use the numpy too so we could say so here i just wanted to show you what is the process we are trying to do here so we can say image dot from array and we can take this image and if we take this image and we can say what will be the type of this output let me run this code first down here so this will become the image so which image which was the nd array now it's became the image type because now you could process this image whatever size you would want to change it so we are going to take this code here and we will convert that back to image so now our image from the array became back to image now at this point we could actually crop the image so we could say the result image is going to be image dot crop and here we could provide the size which we are looking into so 0 comma 0 comma we can say what is our size x and what is our size y that's what we want to crop it and at this point if you would actually get this shape of image that's so let me show you there is a trick so if we try to come here and say what is the image shape you are going to get an error because the image is no longer the array because array has the shape not the image object so actually you could use the image size 0 and the image size 1 because image size 0 and 1 is going to tell you the image size so you could say the output is going to be format here you could say you want to print first comma second comma third and here it's going to be the image size of 0 1 and the 2 okay there are two parentheses There you go. So the output of this image object has these two values 0 and 1 and now we can get an idea that all of our images are cropped based on multiple of our image patch size. So the cropping has been done. After the image has been cropped now we need to go back and make sure that all of these images so we need to patch them based on the multiple of 256 by 256 what which is our patch size so we are going to use a library called the patchify so let's come back here we can say from patchify import so patchify is not there so we can go ahead and we can install it pip install patchify okay this is installed now we do not have this warning import patchify so now we can have access to patchify let's take a look what this patchify does so remember this is what our image which we are reading so i can actually show you the patchifications so the patchify it takes the image so you can take this image and you can patch it so you could provide whatever your image patch size you would want to use so our image patch size is going to be the image patch size x image patch size y and the color so three colors 
So the steps is going to be these steps. If step will be the same as image patch size. So the create the patches of size 256 and that we call them image patches. So let's image patches. So let's read the image, create the image patches. And if you look into the image patches here, that is basically the various images of different patches. And if we say, what is the length of patch? So two patches. So based on this image shape, let's read this image shape is 544 by 509. So once we have cropped this image properly, the patches is going to have the two image. If you will change for this to something else, then you will get the different number of patches. So this is the patchification code which we are going to use. And at this point, the image input image is actually the NumPy array. So it takes the NumPy array because that is what's CV to read. So if we come back here and if we would want to apply the patch, we need to make sure that this input image is back to NumPy array. So we need to convert this to NumPy array. So that's where we will do np dot array and we are going to put the image back here. So here we took image convert back to image type, which is pillow image type. We could crop it and putting back to NumPy array. And now that will be going to be used as the input for patchification. And here we could generate call patch images. That's where we get the patchify. Now if we say print the length of patched images from this code now you are going to get an idea that how many patched images are being generated based on each input so here eight patch images three patched images four so you can get an idea how this patch image array is working not only that if you if you could print the patched images size you can get the patched image so let me show you here that here is your image patch and if you would want to print image patch dot shape let me read the image first. So there are two patches. Shape, you can get two of one, one, 256, 256. So this is the patch image. So you can get an idea that this is the shape. And if you would say, what is the shape of zero? This, what is the shape of one is one. So for all the images we have in the patches, we need to enumerate for the patch zero shape and patch one shape so let's come back here comment this line and we can say for i in range of patched images dot shape zero and for j in range of patched images this everything however we are going to use the one and that's where we will be able to get the patched images out remember when we were processing here, shape, let me read. So you see, we want to get this image out. So we need to get from this, this triangle, and then that's where we are going to get these images. Then we will remove this one out, and that's how we are going to get the individual images. So first we need to get the individual image. Individual patched image is going to be this patched image of i comma j so we are going to get i comma j then we will slice the array on this way so that is what we are going to get our individual patch image and if we take this individual patch image and we can get the shape of it that's what you are going to get what you are getting out from that output we supposed to get this output from each image as you could see, everything is same. So we are getting all of these images of size one of 256, 256 and three. So one thing you figure it out that this image is actually transformed into the array of one colon then image size. So now we need to actually perform the min max scalar. So let's take a look from sklearn or the scikit-learn library. There is a method called min max scalar. So using min max scalar, we are going to convert every pixel value between zero and one. So it's a normalization of our input data. So we are going to import this min max scalar method from the sklearn preprocessing. Let's go top from sklearn preprocessing import min 
max scalar and we can also actually take the standard scalar so we have these two scalars avail available with the scikit learn pre-processing and if we take this min max scalar and we process our image here so first let me keep it here now we are here so our image size is this so we will take this image patch and remember we have already take the patch image of 0 0 colon colon so we can take here 0 comma 0 comma colon comma colon and that is the image we have taken and if you look into the shape of it you are getting the one of 256 256 of 3 so, okay and then this will become our temp image so let's take this is our image we just call it image x so now we need to process so let's define the min max scalar first so we could say a scalar or we just call it min max a scalar is min max a scalar so we defined it then we need to perform the min max scalar dot fit transform and this fit transform is going to take the whatever the image we have in, as input so we need to set up the image here so we could say this is our image of x image x so this image x we need to pass here then we need to reshape it and this reshaping is going to be done through the negative one because we are moving one left then we are taking this image of whatever the sh available shape is of negative one dot then we once we have this we could actually reshape it based on whatever the image we have this of available shape because that shape has already been changed now shape so if we run and then we call it image y let's run it let me take this and define it first here so min max scalar let me call this first then make sure the min max scalar is defined now it's okay so min max scalar is defined now we could make this call it should be the array that's my mistake here that's why we got this error rest should be okay so reshape is going to take the two values and then shape two values okay image y now it's perfect so now we can take this image y and we could actually see the what is the image y shape now we take this image y and just only use the first part and that's what we are going to get this image so once you get this image y we need to just take the first of this like the very first index value and then when we select this that's what gives us the image so we have performed the min max scalar on our code so we take this whole code apply in our method here replace this with this image this image this image so the individual divisible patched image has been used here and we need to make sure that this method we take this from here and we make sure that this method is at the very top so you run this you run this so that's what makes it important there so we will not forget and that's where we get this image and then we can say this image is equal to zero of its shape and that's what gives us the perfect 256 by 256 size of image we can say print this image and its shape oh sorry this is removed now it's perfect so here we are getting one of this then after minimax scalar we are getting the image of 256 by 256 by 3 so let's comment this let's comment this and then this is the final value which we are going to store in our input image data set dot append because this is an array and we are going to put this image here let's run this code every image being processed and filled into this image data set now we take this image data set 
we say the length of this image data set it's going to have all of these images stored into here so here we started with zero now we have 945 images stored in this image data set exact what we have done for image now we have to do exact same thing for our masks images so now we are going to create a new data set mask data set and we are going to perform the same code but we are going to make few changes here so we are going to create the image types first so this image type is going to be processed in a way that for image image type in we need to make sure that we have an array of images and masks so that's where we will process both of them full data set okay now we could say if image type is images then the image extension is going to be this else if image type is masks the image extension is going to be the png so now we have got the image type properly and image extension properly and just just a very quick even it's a wrong but if you would want to make sure that whatever we are processing has to be stored correctly we just really need to make sure that we just make a simple check here too at the very last there you go so what we have done that if this is the case and this is the case so this will be the mask data set actually this is not correct but i'm just trying to show you that how we are going to make few changes inside here but at least this code is designed to read the images first then mask first and then read the proper jpeg or the png and then store everything into individual data set let's run this code oh this is very bad code so we need to put um, append here and we need to change this to append here whatever the patched image is let's stop it let's rerun this code again and while this code is we could actually use the same we could say the print of image data set and they print the size of mask data set that is done if you look into the length you could see that both data sets are having the 945 and 945 images so make sure one change i have just added it because this individual image has to go inside the array initially there was a bug so at least we have got done now we need to make sure that we make few changes whenever we are going to process the mask the very first change we need to do is that the way we are going to process these masks. So let's look into the CV2 IM read method. So the open CV documentation say that whenever you are going to use the IM read method, the image is going to be decoded as a BGR. However, the image which you have stored is in the order of RGB. So whenever you are going to process the images for your mask, we have to make sure that their order is set based on RGB, not the BGR. So whenever we are going to process these images, we need to make sure that after reading these images, the images have read correctly. It means we need to make sure that this image is actually being set properly into the RGB order, not the BGR order. So we could say if image type is equal to mask, because that's what image type is equal to mask, we need to make sure that this image is equal to CV2, and then we have to change the color. So CVT color is a method where you could say that you would want to take this input image and you need to change its color to CV2, CVT, CV2 types. So what is our original color is BGR to RGB. So that is the color type we would want to change. And this is actually the color. If you see here, we can actually say color. It will give BGR to RGB. There you go. So this way, our image has been changed from BGR to RGB because we have validated 
that input is read for the BGR and then we are doing that only for masks image. That's the one big change we need to perform. Second, we need to change this because we do not need to do the transform because the mask image are not because we are only performing the transform for the input images, not for mask. So we need to change this code, which we are trying to process for individual images or the mask. So I will take this whole code from here for now, and I will put that is inside this images area. So it means we need to write a new code in order to process the mask images. So first thing we need to generate the mask. So we could say individual patched mask is going to take the same patched image which we have done and then get the patched mask. At this point, the patch mask is basically the size of one of this. So we need to get only the image out. So you could say that individual patch mask is equal to the first one and now we need to mask data set must have stored this mask image that's all we really need to do we really do not need to perform this part so that's why we have individual patch mask images so now we can run this whole code that is going to generate the same size of image as well as the mask data set however the images inside individual of these data sets are masked image in the RGB format and in the individual image which are the original as it is. Now we can check the size. They both are 945, 945 but now we need to validate that can we make sure the images which we have stored in both of these data sets are the correct one. Let's take a single image in image data set which is so here is what the individual image inside the image data set look like if you will want to check for mask data set that is what you are seeing into the mask data set so now if you would want to take this image and convert that to numpy array if we just take and say np dot array and convert the mask image so this became the numpy array same thing if you will try to do this for the image data set now it's became the numpy array so we want to make sure that the data is uniform in the both of them so we are going to perform a very quick check for all of the images in the mask data set and for all of the images into the image data set and we make sure everything is uniform here and for the mask data set np dot array so this is just a confirmation that everything is in the numpy array images here it does not change anything in terms of the size of your images so if you see here that is still everything is same size here now we need to show the images which are stored inside these data sets so let's try to work on that so in order to show these images we need to use the library called the matplotlib so let's import that library first we can come here from matplotlib import i plot as plt. So now we have the plt object which is referencing the pi plot, but we can use the plt. So let's take the one of the image here. So this is the image number zero, which is is a numpy array. So if you look into this image of shape, is two fifty six by two fifty six of one. So now we can actually show this image using im show method of plt of pi plot. So plt dot im show. This is our input image, which is actually the matplotlib is taking this image and showing it. However, if you will take this image, you will say, let me show you the type of this image is actually numpy array. And if you will take this image, for example, and you say I would want to do numpy dot reshape, you take this given image and you would want to convert that to whatever your patch size is. So you could say I would want to change to this, this of three. So this is 
numpy nd array so whether you use this image or you reshape it based on input image and convert back to this way they both are exactly the same so now we can also show here the plt dot im show and we can also say that what is the corresponding mask image so here we need to show these two images side by side so we need to do little more coding to create the subplot plt dot figure and you can define the figures fix size and you could say my fix size is 14 by 10 so make it 8 and you can create the subplot you call this first subplot and this subplot is going to have the first image then you can create the another subplot too and after that we need to the subplot must be the three digit number because that's where the subplotting is being defined so we need to make sure that this number is 121 this number is 122 let's run this code and as you could see that we have the left side is the original the right side we have the mask image now we need to make sure that these numbers should be the random so we could get an idea of any image stored in our image as well as the mask data set so let's import the random import random and then we can actually get the image id so you can get here you can say random image id is equal to random dot rend int and here we are just creating a range so you could say the total length between 0 to whatever the length of our data set is so we can use image data set length of image data set and that will generate a random image id that we can inject here or inject here and that's where a random image will be selected as you could see you can get a very good idea how these images has been stored in our image as well as the mask data set in the next step we need to process the labels and add the one hot encoding so this is what we have seen that given image we need to make sure that we are able to generate the one hot encoding for our labels so looking into the json file which is available with this data set as you could see that here are the water and water value is 50e3c2 however the segmentation when it was done the water value has been changed from this value to this value if you look into the building value here is a d0 0 to 1b however the actual building value is 3c1098 so we are going to use this connotation to process our one hot encoding let's come back here so we are going to write the python code to convert from hex value to rgb so let's decide the so building class is building and the building code is this so first we need to make sure that we do not use hash here so we could say l strip and remove the pound and remember we need to split this value into the three segment this 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 so we need to write a particular code here so we need to generate everything into a tuple for i in then you can give range so you can say 0 2 and 4 that is where your range is and then you are going to create the tuples based on that so you could say the int the tuple of integer value of given this class building and when you are using this value you could say you can take this i colon i plus 2 and what we need to take this integer of this value so we take this value and because this is a hex so we need to make sure that this value is actually being processed by the value of 16 which is the base for hex decimal so the integer it should be here comma 16 so i think that should be the proper fit okay now it's set so we still need one parenthesis to complete it out so now it should not be an 
error and then this whole tuple is what we need to convert that to numpy array so process it let's see what happens this tuple became 3 1 and 9 oh it should be 2 because this is 1 but if we change this to i plus 2 now you are getting 60 because remember the base 16 of 319 was exactly 319 sorry let's go back to one here so the base 16 of 319 is always going to get the exact same number however once you say i plus 2 you are getting the 3c became 60 10 became 16 and 9 it became 152 and now we need to take this thing convert that to np array so np dot array as our array and that is what is our class building so that's became the class building so let me close this that's how you got the class building if you would want to print you can get the class of building similar to that we can take this and we can change this to land this is the value of land and this land is what now we are getting the value of land next we need to do for each of these labels third is our road that is our road next in line is vegetation We have got vegetation covered two more to go water and the last one is the unclassified or unlabeled And all of these labels we have got into the class of numpy array so these are our labels and because these labels only belong to our mask data set we need to create a method which takes the rgb value and convert it to 2d label so now let's try to get the labels out i will try to show you how we could get that thing too so labels so let's see how we can get remember we need to iterate whole mask data set so we can say for i in the range of mask data set and the mask data set range going to be 0 to its mask data set shape so if we so the range we want to create whatever the mask data set shape is so let's get what is the shape there are 945 images of size this so the range will become shape of 0 so 945 so we need to get the range from 0 to 945 and we need to store all of these value into a labels data set so that's our labels data set and we can say label is equal to whatever we are getting from so we need to take this mask data set of the input image of i so the zero of whatever we are passing so that will be the image would be labels dot end and that label is going to store so we need to write a method which takes this and generate the label out for us so that method is what we are going to write here we will say define rgb2 label and which is going to take a label value whatever it's really being here and what it does is actually return the label segment so label segment is what is going to return just right here and then we can say 
return label segment so this label segment is going to be stored so we will take this method here and we will pass the input so plus here let's here so that's our method there is nothing code here which we need to write here so depending on this code so if you will say what is the length of our labels it will be the length of our mask data set we convert this whole labels we could say the labels are equal to numpy dot array of labels and then we can get the unique value of labels which we found in labels here so if you look into the label and the value what we are finding into the zero you will find one because that is what we are storing so let's try to write code here so this label or this input is what is really being set as this mask image data set correct so what we need to do we need to make sure that the label is equal to this patch mask which we have created individual patch mask so let me set it here so that is our individual patch mask so the based on this mask data set is input we need to create an object which has the same size but filled with zero so we could say the label segment is equal to np dot zeros but we need to provide this size so we can say shape of this and we can also say that z if type should be we need to provide the d type which is np dot uint 8 so this is what the label segment size so this is exactly the size so if you go ahead and you can say print of label segment dot shape that is what is going to print so let me just run this code if you input here you will see this is a zero value all filled with 256 by 256 of 3 now we can look into the code the water code is zero then the land code is one the road code is two so we need to follow this coding and we need to apply here so we could say the label segment and then we need to make sure that we are processing it so numpy dot all and if the label is equal to water axis is negative one is equal to is equal to zero so that is what is going to generate the class of water that's where we got the class of water so we need to perform exact same thing for all of these values let's remove this we don't really need this code anymore so the value one we are going to use for after water the one is for land two is for road two three four and five two is road three is building four is vegetation five is unlabeled two is road three is building four is vegetation and last one is unlabeled there you go so all of these classes has been processed and whatever the class of that mask image is going to be stored here so let's run this method at this point from this code all the image content has been processing and then result is going to be stored into this labels data set the size of labels data set will be the size of the mask data set we are converting to the numpy array and now if we look into the what is in label zero you could see everything is one what is in labels three we are going to get some of these value depending on whatever it is so this is how you are going to get the value of labels so right now i just wanted to show you that when you are seeing the label you are seeing the results something look like this way so we need to make sure that we take this and we expand it everything in a single row so in order to expansion we could say np dot 
expand dimensions for the labels and we want to which axis so you could say axis 3 this is how we are going to expand all these labels now if you take this label and say what is the zero something is not right here because i was expecting to see all of these values they are expanded and they are all in one array rather than in the size of one by one by one three and then for the size of 256 by 256 so let's take a look where the problem is so as you see that we this expansion did not work so we need to look into our this method the segmentation so here we are getting segment we need to make a change in our segmentation is that it's equals to we take this and we slice it from colon comma colon comma zero because before we perform let me show you that we take this label segment and we print the label segment here and if you run this code you are going to see the result so you are getting this label segment this way so we need to make sure that we take only one value out of this segment because there are already multiple of these values so in order to process that we can write this code which takes this label segment and get one value out so let's run this code again and then rerun this code now you are getting the one value out of all of those segments so this would be a better code let me close this stop it run again rerun this whole code again so now we have better formatted values stored in our labels data set the size is still the same we are making sure all the values in numpy array now if we look into the labels you could see that all the labels are this now we are changing the dimension and now you could see that our dimension has been expanded from this direction to that way so let's come back here you could say i need the unique value so you could use numpy dot unique labels and let's see what we are going to get so you are going to get zero to five so those are the labels which you have stored in in your mask classes and that's what we are getting the unique values coming out from our mask data set so this labels data set has these unique value one to five you could say print okay here will be the values and then format is going to be this value from this based on mass these are the 0 to 5 unique values now we can render the output based on the labels we can come back to our printing code that was our method printing code we take this here and rather than using this we could actually change this to the labels and we just really need to slice it so let me first show you result then show you the reason how we are going to slice it and based on the labels here you could get the results houses water body whatever it is so now you are using the labels so if we want to really get an idea what it is so you can take the labels you can use the first image that is what you are getting but you see that most of the values are inside the one two array so that's why we if we try to slice it we say what is in zero you are going to get this way then if you say i would want to get even further so that's why you are slicing so the slicing is go to slice one slice two and then give me the last value so if you try to do the slice value you are going to get these values out so this is what has been used in order to process the images here so that's why zero slice of that so at this point we have final data set is our the 
image data set so that will be our master training data set so we could say master training data set is going to be the image data set so that's our master training data set now we can use the as scikit learn the train test split method to split this into the training as well as the test data set so we could say from sk learn dot model selection we are importing train test split so now we are going to use this train test split method so if you look into this the definition of this method this method really needs the input data set as well as the corresponding labels data set so we need the corresponding labels so we already have the input data set but what is the labels category so now we need to make sure that we could generate the labels from our labels so let me come back here and total classes so now we have total classes which is going to be the np dot unique in our labels the length of it let's run this code If we look into what is the unique total classes, you will get six zero two five. So we already know this part. So now we need to create the categorical data sets for our classes. So we could use the TensorFlow Keras utility, which convert the categorical. So we could say from TensorFlow dot Keras dot utils import to categorical. And if we look into the two categorical. You need to pr process the labels data set as why total number of classes you need to provide and if you wouldn't want to provide the data type otherwise we'll use the default data type so we need to provide the labels data set which is our input data set we also need to provide the total number of classes so the num classes is the total number of classes that's where categorical and this is what going to create the labels data set so we could say labels categorical data set let's take a look what is inside here now you could see that all that categorical one two depending on whatever it is that's where our labels categorical data set is we could shape so for every masked label is size of 256 by 256 by 6 because there are six classes so this really proves that this data set is going to match our input requirement so in this case the split is going to take this as an input categorical data says as the labels data set so it really matches the 256 by 256 for 956 if you take this and let me give the shape of it too So this is the RGB. These are the classes. Everything is same. Now we need to provide the split size. So we could say the test data set should be the 10%. Let's put the 10%, which is 0 0.10. Or make it 15. So 85, 15 is split. Random. I think this is the random state. Give 100. So that's where we are going to get our output. That output is going to be stored into the train and test split so you could say x of train x of test y of train y of test run this code now if we take this let's print their shape print it 945 images has been distributed in this one and as this way so it's the same split so what is the height and width so if you would want to get what is the image height that will be the whatever your training is dot shape of zero if you would want to get the image width will be the one channels you could actually use this and that will be the two so that's how you can get these value and then you can print them out also sorry it should be the one because the very first one that's the size that should be the Two, and that should be the three so 256 256 by three if you'd want to get the total number of you will need the last element from the y train or y test 
so you could say here the y train of the shape 3 that's how you will get the total classes so we are going to close our tutorial for the part one of this workshop here related with data preparation for our deep learning with satellite imagery in the second video we are going to perform end-to-end -end machine learning using the unit deep learning model and we are going to start from there the code which we have covered in this portion of our workshop is going to be available in the DeepWorks GitHub repo. It will be available in this DL satellite imagery folder. And here is the Jupyter notebook, which, which, which we have just created. Now, at this point, we are going to conclude the first part of this video. In the second part of the video, we are going to start from the deep learning process. And the input for the second video will be the output of this video where we have generated the training and the test images. Thank you so much for your time. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in my second video. Until then, thank you so much.